So I've got my uh, code from S1.2 here, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to clean things up a little bit, and it's getting a little crowded in this window here, so I'd like to see if I can get some of this stuff out of the way. So first let's notice uh, what I did while I was off camera. I've tidied up a little bit to separate the printing from the getting the input values so that I'm only printing things that I already know, these variables d and a and time now in seconds. And up here is where I'm actually getting those values. So I'm, I'm just uh, keeping things a little neater and tidier there, I think. Also, uh, here I'm taking some action after I've done the reading, so I'm not doing that digital read right in here. I'm reading it in, and then I'm taking action on the result. But this is doing exactly the same things that we were doing in the, uh, the S1.2 sketch. Now, one of the things I can do to get rid of some stuff is I can add a new tab. I can go up here and say New Tab, and I'm going to call this one S.H because it goes with this sequence of S files. And now I've got this new tab. I could take some code, like that chunk there, and I'll just cut that and paste it over here. And if I compile that, I'm going to run into all sorts of problems because it doesn't see that stuff anymore when it tries to compile S1.3. So to get that, I have to say include the stuff from the s.h file in that other tab. And now it goes and gets stuff from s.h, compiles it, just as if it was actually still here in the file. So that's just a way of getting some stuff out of our way so we can see what's actually happening in the rest of the code. Now let's go down here and get some values. We're going to uh, have that new tab so we've got some more room to work with and we're going to add exponential smoothing. So we know what time it is now. We know what time it was last time. We implemented that last time. We'd like to do some smoothing. So we're getting this analog read data and it'll have some noise on it. It's going between 505 and 506 and 505 and 506 and really we'd like to average that out somehow. So one of the easiest ways is with exponential smoothing. And we'll need to have a variable that we can use here for our smoothing time step, our smoothing time constant. So let's, uh, it should be in microseconds. So it'll be an unsigned long in microseconds, and we'll call it tau for the time constant. And it should be a representative number of about how long we're going to average over. So if I made tau equal to 10,000, that would be 10,000 microseconds or 10 milliseconds. So it's going to tend to smooth things out over about a 10 millisecond time frame. And I'm going to do that by weighting the average of what the currently read value was with what the previously read values were. So I'm going to get a smooth data value that is equal to some weighted average of A, the one that I just read, plus the rest of it is going to be the other part of the weighted average, so 1 minus W. So if W is a small number, 1 minus W will be such that the two weights add up to 1. And I'll multiply that by the old smoothed value that I had for A. Well, somewhere along the way, I'm going to have to keep track of that smoothed value. I'm going to have to declare it somewhere. So where should I declare that smoothed value? I think it should be maybe declared right here. I'll make sure that it's going to be saved from time to time by making it a static variable. I'll make sure that it's a decimal value so that it can be between 505 and 506 by making it a float. 
and I'll make it AS and I'll make it start off equal to zero. And then it'll get a new value by taking zero times this waiting function, one minus the waiting function, and the red value times this W waiting function. So that it, oh, but it wasn't declared. We don't know what W is yet. So W is going to depend on the time constant. The longer the time constant, the less weight I'm going to put on W. So if I make W equal to the time since the last value divided by the time constant, that should work out. So W equals dt over tau. And let's try that. Oh, it wasn't declared. Well, let's declare it. Let's call it a float. And it compiles and uploads. And well, I won't see anything different because I, I haven't printed anything out yet. So I could print out the smooth value last. P with print with a comma and a space the smooth value AS, and let's see what comes out. Now, AS is a float, so it should come out with decimal points. Oh, and it's sort of spilling off the edge, and it's getting overflow. Something bad is happening here. I needed to make sure that I put a new line in there. And... I think I'm still going to have some problems with those overflows that were coming out, but at least I'll be able to see something of what's happening here now. Mm. W is dt over tau, and W is resulting in some bad stuff happening here. So let's find out what W is each time we go through this loop. So, print with a comma and a space, W. You're all going to make mistakes like this. You're all going to miss things. And we need to check along the way to find out what's going on. So, W each time is equal to 50. There's no way W should be equal to 50. W should be less than 1. So dt, dt is a big number. It's about 500 milliseconds or 500,000 microseconds. So yeah, it's calculating it right according to that formula, but we want to make sure that it never gets bigger than 1. So we'll set it equal to the minimum of 1 or dt over tau. And let's try it now. See what happens. Now it's turning out to be 1 each time. That's making sense. And we're getting a number that, well, it's always just the same as the number we read. So there's no smoothing going on here. And that's because our time constant is really short compared to how often we're sampling. We're sampling every 500,000 microseconds and we're using a time constant of 10,000. So let's go to a time constant of a million. See how the smoothing works out. Uh, now we're getting W equal to zero every time. That can't be right. It should be small but it shouldn't be zero because this should be 500,000 over a million. We should be getting something like 0.5 there. dt. dt is an unsigned long, so it's an integer kind of a thing. And tau is an unsigned long, so it's an integer kind of thing. So if I do integer division and it's going to be less than 1, I'll get 0. 
So I better make sure that I make this into a float. I'll force it to be a float with this cast. And now I'm getting a half. And I'm getting this smooth value is moving slowly towards a value that's close to these values. And it's staying sort of in between, not getting quite as extreme. So it's smoothing off the edges a little bit. So that's kind of reassuring. So let's go to a more realistic situation. We're still going to hang back to, say, 100,000 milliseconds here. But let's take our delay out. And what do we get? It's happening really quickly, and it's giving us a smoothed off value that's somewhere in between 505 and 506. And the waiting function is really small. It's going around the loop as fast as it can. The waiting function is really small. And if we wanted to see it in detail, we would need more decimal places. So let's make that out to five decimal places. And we could make AS go out to three decimal places and see what happens. So now we're getting our smooth value to three decimal places. We're getting our weighting value. And you can see it changes a little bit because DT changes a little bit from time to time. But it's not changing a lot. So now we've got an analog value that we can read in and we've got a smoother estimate of what that analog value is from our smoothing code. So that's kind of cool. And we no longer have a delay in here. So it's going as fast as it possibly can and if I switch off auto scroll we can see it's taking about two or three milliseconds in between printing output. Maybe we don't want to print it out quite that fast, so we'll have to do something that will allow us to do our smoothing really quickly over short time steps, but only print it out occasionally. And we'll move on to do that in the next video.